Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Coach G Pie here at Steam Academy. We're talking about Code.org's Computer Science Discoveries Unit 3, Lesson 14. We're getting into conditionals. Conditionals is a nice long lesson. We've got 11 levels to uh, master today, and we got quite a long list of new code. So let's take a look at our question of the day. Question of the day is how can programs react to changes as they are running? So this lesson introduces you to Booleans and conditionals, which allow a program to run differently depending on whether a condition is true. Um, you guys are going to start out by playing a short game in class, um, which you will respond to according to whether a particular condition is met. And then you're going to move on to this lesson right here that I'm talking to you about right now. So our vocab words that we've got to master is Boolean expression. Boolean is, in programming, it's an expression that evaluates to true or false. And that's going to make more sense once we get into the lesson here. We've got a condition. A condition is something a program checks to see whether it's true before deciding to take action. And then conditionals are statements that only run when certain conditions are true. Okay, so we're going to get into some button pressing. When button pressed, do this. And so then the Boolean expression will be checking, is the button pressed? Yes or no? True or false? So we've got some new code down here. We've got if statements, um, equality operators, inequality operators, greater than properties, less than or equal to properties, less than properties, and less than or equal to operators. So let's get started. All right, in level two, we're talking about Boolean expressions. It's an expression that can only evaluate to true or false. Read the code below. There are some new symbols in which you haven't been introduced to. Take a guess at what they mean and try to answer the following question, which result will be printed in the console by this program. All right, so you know these. I can't reset once I've done it. All right, so let's look at this code here. We've got two sprites, sprite one, sprite two. Predict which command will print. We've got a console.log sprite y. And when you see this equal equal, that means equals. Two equals means an equals. One equal means a get. All right, so console.log sprite one y equals sprite 2y, okay, so 1y is going to equal 2y, all right, and then the second one, sprite 1x is greater than sprite 2x, okay, and then the third one, sprite 1x is less than sprite 2x. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So I'm going to pull this up here because I think something's going to happen down here. Now, I've already made a guess. I want you to pause this video, make your guess before you hit run and see what happens. All right, so hopefully you pause the video. Let's see what I guessed. I actually can't remember what I guessed. Let's see here. So I guessed true, false, true, true, false, true, based off of my information here. So what I said was, um, does sprite 1y equal sprite 2y? Well, yes, they do. They're both 200. So that's true. Does sprite 1x, is it greater than sprite 2x? Sprite 1x greater than sprite 2x? No. So that one was false. And then is sprite 1x less than sprite 2y? Is sprite 1x less than sprite 2y? Yes. So I said true. So that's where I come up with that guess. So let's see what happens when I hit run. All right, so down here in the con debug console log, I got true, false, true, true, false, true, and that is what I guessed, and I just explained my reasoning for that. So let's hit finish. All right, we got us a video. What is a Boolean expression? Let's find out. <laughs> My name is Felicia Williams, and I work at Facebook in augmented reality and virtual reality. 
augmented reality is going to really change the way that uh, we think about using computers. And it's a really fun place to be right now. Whether you're making an animation, an app, or a game, it's often necessary for your computer program to test a condition to see if it's true or false. To do this, we use a Boolean expression, an expression that can only evaluate to either true or false. This is similar to asking the computer a yes or no question. Let's look at three types of expression that we can make with comparison operators. Two equal signs compares the values in each box and asks, are these two values equal to one another? The greater than sign compares two values and asks if the value on the left is greater than the value on the right. And finally, the less than sign compares the two values and asks if the value on the left is less than the value on the right. For each comparison, we will get either a true or false answer. For example, when playing a game, you may get a bonus when you reach a specific score, say 100. To know when to give the bonus, the computer will use a Boolean expression that asks, is the value stored in the variable score equal to 100? If the expression evaluates to true, then you will get a bonus. If it evaluates to false, nothing happens. We can use another comparison operator to make our game even more accurate. In this example, the bonus is only given if the player score is exactly 100. But if the player passes 100, they should still get the bonus, right? To do this, we'll use the Boolean expression that asks, is the user score greater than 99? If this is true, then the player gets a bonus. By using Boolean expressions to ask true, false questions, you can make your animations, apps, and games even more dynamic and interactive for your users. All righty, let's see what's going on. Whoops, let me move on from this. I don't want to show you bubble number four. My goodness, what a faux pas in a video. So bubble number four is going to give you a little bit of a quiz. I want you to check it out. And once you've done that, hit the pause button here. And once you're done, move on to bubble number five. So I'm going to talk about bubble number five. Booleans. The program draws a race car and a finish line. We are going to figure out when the race car crosses the line. The sprites have all been set up for you. Do this. Add a console.log statement inside the draw loop. Add a Boolean expression inside the console.log that asks, is the X position of the race car less than the X position of the finish line? Look at the output of the program as the car moves. When does the output change and why? And notice this infinity symbol here in the middle. That means that this project is going to be part of a larger project later. Also notice up here when it says, Add a console.log statement inside the draw loop, and I click show me where. It will actually then give me a little pop-up window right there. It says put the console.log statement here. Okay, let me check my version history. I'm going to actually reset this, make sure that I'm in the official beginning stages just like you guys are. Alrighty, so let's take a look here. What do I have? I have a car and a finish line. Car and a finish line. So what I have to do is I have to add a bullet expression inside the console.log that asks, is the X position of the race car less than the X position of the finish line? Is the X position of the race car... Okay. So I gotta find console.log. I had a, a brain moment there. Where's my console.log? And it's okay if you don't know. Okay, so there it is. Okay, console.log. And so the question is, I got a math. It's, what was it, less than, greater than? The X position of the race car less than the X position of the finish line. Okay. So less than, and I'll drop it in there. So is the sprite dot x, and that sprite is not a sprite, it's a race car. 
little C A R race car less than the X position of the finish line. The finish line is finish, capital L I N E, finish line. Okay, that should be all I need to do. Now, in this, what I'm going to watch is down here. I'm going to watch this area down in the console down here. Okay, so watch when I hit reset and run, what happens? All right, I've got a bunch of falses because it's checking my console.log and it's saying that statement currently is false. False. Then all of a sudden, the statement is true. So the final question we have up there is what happened? Why did it suddenly go from false to true? If you think you know, add a comment below. Why did it suddenly go from false to true? All right, and that's it for level five. So let's move on. Da -da -da! Level six, let me double check, make sure that I've got a new version. Okay, so we've got if statements. Boolean expressions allow us to ask questions, but in order to use those expressions or those questions to change the program's behavior, we need an if statement. Do this. Read the code from the race car program. What will the program do when the race car reaches the finish line? And what if the why is the if block inside the draw loop? All right, so let's take a look here. I've got a variable finish line, variable race car, function draw, background white. We've got a race car x equals race car x minus two. And then we've got an if statement in here, right here, third line 13. If the race car X is less than 100, then the console log is going to say winner. Console log being this screen down below, right? We're going to see the word winner in there. All right, so we have to guess what we're going to do, and you know me. You can't always uh, reset once you've done a prediction level. So pause for a minute, type in your response. All right, so hopefully you pause. Let's see what I wrote. I wrote, when the race car X is less than 100, the word winner will print in the console. So let's see if I am correct. So I'm going to scroll this up just a little bit, right below my if statement, and let's see what happens. Again, we're paying attention to this area down here. So right now, we've got no words, no nothing going on. And then all of a sudden, what do we have? We've got winner. So what we said is if the race car's X position is less than 100, remember we still got that grid. So we're looking at less than 100, so right there. So once the race car's middle passes over that point, then we get this winner printed in the console. And that is it. If you happen to know the answer to if the why is the if block inside the draw loop please make that comment down below all right so let's hit finish and move on da, da, da. another video <laughs> The world around us is constantly changing, and we do our best to adapt to different conditions. If it's sunny outside, wearing sunglasses is a good choice. But if it's raining, you'll need to put on a raincoat. Just like humans, computer programs also change depending on different conditions. To make our programs responsive, we use conditional statements. Conditional statements are commands that run a specific block of code only if something is true. The simplest conditional is an if statement. An if statement uses a Boolean expression to ask a true or false question, and then runs the code inside if the Boolean evaluates to true, like this. Let's look at an example of conditionals in action. First, we'll create a sprite. Then, we'll use the draw function to draw the background. Thank <laughs> you. 
and move the sprite across the screen using the counter pattern. We'll add a conditional if statement inside the draw function. Inside the conditional, we'll put a Boolean expression that asks, is the sprite's x position greater than 200? In this case, let's change the look of the sprite if it moves past the middle of the screen. Finally, we'll draw our sprite and see what happens. Computers only do exactly what we tell them to do, but with conditionals, we can have our programs adapt to changes and respond to user input. All right, we're almost done. Let's move on to level eight. Okay, let me check my version history, restart. Sorry about this, I thought I'd already done this prior to the video. All right, so changing fruit. Now that we know how to use the if statements, you can do more than just check if the apple has reached a scale of two. You turn it into a pair once it happens. Do this. Use a conditional in the draw loop to check whether the fruit.scale is greater than two. If it is, change the fruit's appearance to a pair. Okay, so let's see what I got. I'm going to click run. All right, I got an epically growing apple, or it's coming towards me, whichever you want to think about. I kind of think that somebody's pumping it up with like a bicycle tire pump or something. All right, so what do I got to do? I've got to turn this apple into a pear once it reaches a certain size. Did it tell me what size? It says greater than two. Okay, so I need to add a condition. So uh, now I have this control um, drawer in my toolbox. That's where my if statements are. I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to drop it right below that. And so I need a math. So remember, I'm dealing with greater than, less than. So if fruit.scale, whoops, put it in the wrong spot. There it is. Get rid of that. The mistakes happen. If fruit at scale is greater than two, then I'm going to repeat this line two that's up here. Then I'm going to change the dot notation of this. I'm going to change fruit to set animation to pear, not apple. All right, so as it's written, if the fruit gets larger than two, then the fruit is going to change to a pear. That's what it says right here, lines 11 and 12. That's what I added. So let's see. Click the reset button. My apple grows. At some point, it should turn into a pear. Bam. There you go. And that's it for level eight. Let's move on to level nine da, da, da. for more fruity fun. Oh. It's a soup bowl fun. Sorry. I'm going to do the fruit bowl. You guys are welcome to do anything else you want. I said fruit bowl. I meant soup bowl. Maybe it's a fruit bowl. Who knows? All right. So it says this soup bowl. Make sure I've reset and run. I think I did already. I could be mistaken. All right. So this soup bowl will spill out. Um, when it turns upside down, run the program to see how it works. Add a conditional that detects if the bowl is upside down and sets the sprite's animation to be an empty bowl. All right, so we got a bowl turning. Nothing happens. It's magic soup. Let me check my animations drawer. Okay, so I've got an empty bowl and I got a stew bowl. So let's see what I got going on. I've got a variable. That variable is currently assigned to the stew bowl. I've got a draw loop. With a light green background, I've got a soup dot rotation that's rotating at plus three. Now I need to go to the control drawer and grab an if statement. I'm going to drop it right below line six. And here's some math. So now if, I'm gonna, I 
think it's going to be greater than. So let's start there. So I'm dealing with soup's rotation. So I go back to the sprites drawer, grab a rotation block. I'm going to drop it in. Remember, see how it highlights yellow? I need that yellow to be in the front end of my math equation. Change the variable to the label soup. So if soup dot rotation is greater than, now here's where you got to think about rotation. Rotation talks about going around in a circle. So if we're talking about positive number here, it's turning clockwise, which our fruit bowl is. It's turning clockwise. So if the starter value straight up and down is zero and it turns to the right, I think halfway to the right is going to be 90. Why do I think that? Well, I'm thinking geometry here. I'm thinking a 90 degree angle is a perfect corner, right? So I think that the soup rotation needs to be greater than 90. And I don't really know exactly which number, so I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess 100 at this point, just to test it out. If the soup rotation becomes greater than 100, then I want to reset um, the animation tied to that label, so soup. And instead of animation one, I want it to be not stew. I hate when that little pop-up happens. I want it to be the empty bowl. All right, so now I'm going to run this and see what happens. I could have to change some things. Oh, so then my soup disappeared. Let, let me check it again to see if it disappeared at the right time. So I feel like it's disappearing a little too soon. So I'm going to change this number again to maybe like 150 and see what happens. And that's pretty good. So you should have a number somewhere around 150. Could be a little higher, could be a little lower, totally up to you. But as it's written, it satisfies what we were supposed to do under do this. And we're done. Let's move on to the assessment level where I'll give you some pointers. Da -da -da! Assessment level 10. Oh, by the way, I'm going to hit finish here, but if you would like to do A and C for some bonus points, feel free to do that. All right, so assessment level 10. Make the dinosaur turn into a pterodactyl. Let me make sure I don't have any pterodactyls on here. And I don't. Good. Good, good, good. Run the code to see how it works. Add a conditional that will change the dinosaur's animation to a pterodactyl when it reaches the sky. So run the program. The dinosaur is flying up. So here's some pointers for this one. You've got to find a position. All right, so we're talking about the dinosaur's Y value. So hint, first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab an if statement. The next thing you're going to do is go in the math drawer, and you have to decide if the dinosaur's Y position equals or is less than some number. Decide that based off of, you know, put your cursor somewhere and pick a number. Then you're going to use a set animation to change, not the backdrop, the dinosaur, to change the dinosaur from a T-Rex into a pterodactyl. And they already have the pterodactyl loaded for you. There it is, pterodactyl. It starts with a P. It's a pterodactyl. Pterodactyl. I'm kidding. It's not really. It's a pterodactyl. So there's your hint. You're going to need an if statement. You're going to need a math block, either a less than or an equal. That's an equal or something to that nature. And you're dealing with the Y value of the dinosaur. Once you've decided which Y value you're using, it's a set animation. And that's your hint. Moving on to challenge level. Remember to pause here until you're ready. Challenge level, you really only got two choices here. You got visibility challenge and free play. I'd prefer you do the visibility challenge here because I think it's kind of cool. But once again, with challenge level, I'll give you some hints, but I'm not going to do it for you. So sometimes it's useful to hide the image for a while and then have it show again. You can do this by using the visibility property. The visibility property is a little different from other properties you have been in, used in the past. 
If it is a Boolean value, either true, the sprite is visible, or false, the sprite is not visible. By default, visible is set to true. Visible is set to true. Make the balloon pop when it hits the edge of the game area. Add a conditional that checks to see whether the balloon has hit the edge. Use a watcher on the balloon scale to help you out. Watchers are down here at the bottom. Okay, right down here. And create a sprite pop, which uses the pop visual in the animation tab. Use the visible property to keep the pop sprite hidden at the beginning. And then inside the if, add two statements. One that sets the visible property to hide the balloon sprite. One that sets the visible property to show the balloon sprite. Or the pop sprite, I'm sorry. So this one's a beast. This one's kind of meaty, but I'm curious to see how far you can get. Don't be afraid of it. Take a bite out of it. And with that, that's lesson four. Conditionals, get ready for lesson five. Have a great day.